So there was this social theory, the theory of the broken glass, says that if there's a small town where there's one house, a single house with a single broken window, and nobody fixes it, after one day, two days, three days, some people will pass and they will see that this glass is broken and they will get the impression that nobody cares. And so then eventually somebody will take a stone and break another glass. Now there's, we have two broken glasses. Eventually other people go by and they see two broken glasses and they think, oh, that means nobody really cares. And then another person who would probably not do this often, but says, oh, well, nobody cares, I can break another window. And soon enough, when there's a lot of broken windows, any person, even with a good intention, will say, well, if anybody else is breaking windows, then I'm, I'm gonna bring that, bring that window too. Then the whole town has no more windows. And it all started with one broken window. So that was a theory. Now we go, go to New York, subway-based company. They get financing that they can use to buy new trains or whatever they wanna do. And the board comes together, they, they're in the meeting and they discuss what they should do with that financing, new finance, with new money. Because the trains, they're really trashed. There's like punks, etc. They're making graffiti and breaking stuff. And so they say, well, let's replace those trains. Let's buy new ones. But then one person who just read the broken glass theory, he says, well, that's not really gonna help because as soon as we buy new ones, they're gonna trash the new ones too. So we have to do something else. It, and tells his group about the broken glass theory and says, well, let's try that. Instead of buying new trains, let's reno renovate them, you know, let's clean them up, let's paint them. And every time there's a new graffiti or something, we just paint it up so that there wouldn't be a sign that we don't care. The rest of the guys, they say, well, this is not probably not gonna work, but eventually they are convinced to try. They do try it and it works. Every time there is a graffiti and a graffiti, they paint it over and eventually those things stop. And even, I think if I remember well, even the crime rate in the, in the metro, in the subway, it starts to decrease because people start to feel that it's being taken care of. The police officer of, of New York, they hear about that story and take the same guy from the new commissioner of the police to implement the same system to police work. So what they do, instead of focusing on big time felons, they actually go for the small ones and they actually present them to everyone. So let's say if they skip over the metro check, they are brought into a line and everybody sees that they're being taken by the police. And then people start to think, oh, if they care about these small things, then they really care about the big things. But to make the, the story short, uh, eventually it turns out to work. Whether it worked there or not, I find the theory quite fascinating. When I discuss with my students or other people, what I'm always interested to look at is not just to theorize, not just to you know think, say what's good, what's bad, but actually to ask, how does that apply to our lives? And when I look at our lives, I realize there's a potential there. And I think uh, mainly what this theory, again, whether it works on a big level or not, mainly what it reminds us is that we never know what small things we do can actually make a big impact. So I'm standing in a line in a, in a, in a convenience store. Somebody drops a scent and everybody sees it, but nobody does anything. Nobody picks it up, including myself. I was thinking about it, but I didn't go into it, into it yet. While everyone is hesitating, there's this old lady moving very slow, very hard. She gently bends down, takes that coin, gives it back to the person. And then I felt that, and I think everybody felt that in line. Everybody felt ashamed because, you know, we didn't do it, but that old lady who had the most trouble to do it, she did it. I realized that something switched in my mind and the next time when such a situation happened, I wouldn't hesitate. I paused it aside for myself when I was still living in Switzerland. I was standing in with a friend in a train station. Suddenly I hear this BAM! And I turn back and I see this guy who was going with a, with a small kind of a scooter. He obviously hit a pole and probably he was drunk. And then he was kind of big, without hair, so he's a bit scary, intimidating. But he's lying there, face down on the ground. I see everyone just standing there frozen and nobody does anything, nobody moves. And for me, it was very instinctual. Maybe, who knows, maybe it was influenced by that old lady. Straight away, without any hesitation, I just walked towards him and asked if he's okay. And then I saw that whenever I did it, everybody else just suddenly just rushed in and said, oh, is it okay, is what's happening? And then what's interesting is that before I did it, uh, nobody else did it. We could look at it in many different ways of the situation, but what we have to understand here, or what I like to think about here in this situation, considering the broken glass theory, is that I don't exactly know what influence I had there, as the old lady probably wasn't aware what influence she gave to me. 
sometimes the smallest things that we do can actually have the biggest impact, meaning that even the smallest effort makes sense. Oftentimes we're just so focused about you know, global warming and hungry kids in Africa. And, and if you're really passionate about it, that's okay. But oftentimes we look at these big scale problems and we actually can't really do much about them right here. But then there are these small things which we can do and we never know what big impact we can have. On some level, we might even never know about it, but to be conscious that even the smallest things we do might have a big impact, I think that changes our thinking, that makes us become more aware, more conscious, it makes us appreciate our effort more to do something good. So all in all, you could use the broken glass theory in many other ways or look at it in different ways, but for me that means that we don't necessarily always know what impact we have, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't put the effort in it. The smallest things might be sometimes the most important ones. So yeah, that's, that's the story I wanted to share with you today. So I hope you found that very interesting. I hope you find it useful. Uh, if you're interested in looking into it more, that story, I read it in the book called The Tipping Point. Malcolm Gladwell, I think that's the writer. Very famous book, very well known. If you're interested in how small things can make a big difference, read it. Anyway, I'm not going to waste your, your time anymore. I'm happy that you stayed all the way through the end. Again, we have a lot of different topics scheduled to look at. So if you like this topic, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think the broken glass theory works. Did you hear about it before? Do you feel you can implement it into your lives? I'd be thrilled to hear that. So let me know in the comments. I'm really gonna write back. Subscribe to know when the next video comes out. But all in all, this was Rokas. And again, happy to have this chat with you as always. And I'll see you in the other video. Black Black Black